right, so I believe that HTMX represents a paradigm shift in how you can actually create and generate dynamic content for any web application, but certainly in Django. And we're gonna do this by doing something very fundamental, which is simply just looking up an object in our database, something like we did with this detail view. And so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this detail view right here. And this time I'm gonna just call it recipe detail and we'll call it the HX detail view for HTMX, of course. And so one of the things that we need to start off with right here is understanding this get object or 404 method. What is it actually doing? Well, it's actually going to raise a new template that is the 404 page, right? So this is literally a template if that object is not found. So we want to change that because, again, this is an HTMX view. So what we want to do is bring back that try block and now say object equals to, well, that originally recipe.objects.get. We'll say ID equals ID and user equals to request.user. Of course, passing in the user in this case is only meant to make sure that that user has permission to that object. Then that's pretty much it. And literally any other exception, we'll just go ahead and say the object is none. Okay. So now what we want to do is say if object is none, then we want to return. Well, now we're going to return a different kind of response. We're actually not going to give a 404 template because this little function right here is meant to give a small piece of data. It's meant to give whatever that inline detail data would be, which we'll see in a second. But anyway, so, so now that we've got this, I want to return some sort of different response. And I'm gonna do this by importing the HTTP response directly. So from django.http, we're gonna import the HTTP response. I think we covered this a while back, but in any case, we are gonna use this as our response and I'm just gonna return with not found. That's it, right? I don't necessarily need a status code in this case, uh, but we're just gonna return with the string of not found. Now I could totally render out another kind of template for this, given again, that it's an HTMX root view. And so now that we've got that, I can get rid of this look up here. And this time I'm gonna go ahead and say partials, uh, not particles, but partials detail. Okay, so in our partials, let's go ahead and create the detail in here. So detail.html. And so now what we'll do is just grab literally the detail related stuff, not the block content, but just this one single inline thing. Now, the question is, do we want the children elements in here as well? Well, maybe. So let's just, let's just bring it in. I'm going to cut it out of the original detail and come in to our new partials detail. Okay, cool. Um, so now we have a brand new view and template to handle this HTMX lookup. Okay, so with this, I'm going to go ahead and bring it into my URLs. Let's go in here and now go ahead and do recipe detail HX view. Um, and of course, this is a detail view, so I'm going to go ahead and use something like this. Uh, but now what I'll do is just put in HX in front of it. Okay, and then we'll add that detail view here, and then we'll call this hx detail. Okay, so with that, we might as well also have a get absolute URL method for that. All right, so now we're going to just call it get absolute, or let's just say get hx URL, and this time it's recipes hx detail. Let's just verify that. There we go. Okay. Cool, so now we've got this object here and we want to view the detail here. Okay, so now back into our actual detail view itself, now we can do a div and we can do a target, so hx get, and we wanna get this URL. Now, if you think about this view itself, it actually does have the object in here. And so we can do get hx URL, that will absolutely get that object. And then we can do an HX trigger. So what is an HX trigger? Well, that is asking when we're actually gonna run this here. So in the form, we actually didn't need to write a trigger because there already is one. It's when you submit the form that by default will post this data. And so we wanna actually use that same sort of idea when we are loading data as well. So what I want to do then is go into htmx.org and we're going to look for triggers. So triggering requests. And there's a bunch of different items for triggering requests. 
You can do a mouse enter. You can do a mouse enter once. Hey, that actually looks kind of interesting. Um, you can do all sorts of things, right? And there's other ones that are pretty cool, like load. Once the element is loaded, once it's revealed, as in somebody scrolls into it, it actually triggers that request. This might be the most interesting one of them all. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that in as revealed. And we'll take a look. Okay. So now going back into our detail view, let's get rid of the edit here. Notice that it loaded. It does take a moment to load, but it's also hard to tell that it is loading. So another thing we can do is inside of a loading element, any HTMX element here, and this also includes for the form itself, which we'll come back to this form, not to worry. Um, we're going to go ahead and do div class equals to HTMX indicator. And this will actually allow me to put anything in here. And HTMX by itself actually will add a couple of things to this class right here. So this is the default class. I didn't make that class up. That's actually from HTMX. So now if I refresh in here, notice it says loading, right? Which is actually, I think, really, really nice. So it's actually giving me exactly what it is that I'm looking for. Now, in this case, it's actually not great for the database. So if we actually look at the what's happening here is in the detail view, it's going to look for that object. And then in the, the actual HTMX view, it also looks for that object. So what I can do then, instead of actually having the object in here, I can just use the reverse call for that specific URL, right? So in other words, I would bring in this right here and we'll come back in. And then in my detail view, that's the URL I want to use now. So we'll say look at our HX URL and we'll pass that in as our context object now. Let's just make sure that reverse is in here, that I have reverse in my shortcuts, and I do not. So we'll go ahead and do from Django.URLs import reverse. And so I can actually use that reverse again. And the keyword arguments are going to be literally the ID that's being passed to this view. And so now in our detail view, instead of using um, not the detail partial view, but rather the actual detail view, instead of using this, of course, we're going to use the simply HX URL that's being passed into that context. And so it's not actually looking up anything here, right? This is just formulating the ID based off of what's being passed into the original URL. And then we're only hitting the database one time. So if I refresh in here, now it does that look up again. And if I look up for something that does not exist, oops, let's go ahead and try that. I get not found, right? And again, we can actually have all sorts of things showing up here. Uh, which I think is cool. And you can also change this to having a different status. That is actually still acceptable. Uh, it's just we want to make sure that we're not giving back the original template. So let's actually take a look at what it looks like if we do give back the original template. So HTTP 404, that act, this kind of original template is what I mean by that. And so we'll go ahead and raise our HTTP 404 here and we refresh. And now it's not doing a whole lot. Right. And of course, if we inspect the view or ins inspect the console itself, we'll see something like this. Right. So it is giving us the status code. It is giving us this error, uh, but it's not giving anything to the user. And that's, I think, the problem that we want to avoid. Thus, I give this response of not found. Simple enough. OK, so the reason why I think this is a paradigm shift has to do with everything I just did here. And that's what I want to talk about now. So we've got this one single HTML block that could in theory be based off of JavaScript. And then it could also in theory render it out like this. So the approach that we would have to start at is looking at what JavaScript would send back in general, you know, situations. So when you're using the JavaScript like this in a similar way, what would it look like? So first off, let's go ahead and do I'm going to make a directory called fixtures. This will be useful later as well. But inside of fixtures, I'm going to run python manage.py dump data and we'll do our recipes app. So if we hit enter here, this is JSON data, which stands for JavaScript object notation. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and just indent it to four and that will give me a better indentation. So it's a little easier to read. 
And then with that, I'll go ahead and add it into fixtures and recipes.json, just like that. I hit enter. And now in that newly created folder, we see JSON data. So this is actually similar of a format that would be sent back in a view, like an API view, similar to this in a way. Instead of rendering out a template, it would send back JSON data very, very similar to this. Maybe not identical to this because we would have control over that. And then once you have this data, you have to figure out how to parse it and turn it into the formats you're looking for, like in these partials here. Like to do all of that with JavaScript is not a trivial task. What also gets a little bit challenging is something like this. What about all of those children elements? The JSON's not necessarily showing that. So we'd have to enrich the JSON in several different ways. And even just talking about it, hopefully you can see how complex it can end up getting. Now, I don't think that means that you shouldn't learn how to do those things. I think you definitely should learn how to do those things. Um, but this is where that paradigm shift comes in is whether or not you need that now or in the future. Now, the thing is with JavaScript, I think it is a tool that is very, very useful. I'm, not, I'm certainly not saying that HTMX is going to solve all of your problems because it won't. But it can at least help us speed up the dynamicness of our site or how it might look. Uh, so I think that's really cool. The other part about this is now what we can do is we can actually do lookups in other areas, right? So we can actually use just that simple, this line right here. Of course, I need to update how I, where I get this information, but this can be reused anywhere on my application, which I think is also very cool. So now that we understand a little bit more about HTMX, let's actually take a look at the HTMX approach to editing query sets to essentially, you know, changing all this as well as um, the actual forms and all those elements in there too.